you're still on the penciling stage of your comic, and honestly, if you're working on a webcomic, you're probably always going to be coming back to the penciling stages as you hit new pages over and over again because your comic is going to take months or years to make. Anyways, if you're on your pencils, you're probably wishing you could draw faster. I bet on any stage in your comic, you're wishing you could work faster, because that's where I'm always at, where I'm like, man, why don't I have 7,000 hands and never sleep so that I can get so many pages done? But unfortunately, I have my limitations. Comics take a long time, and they're a lot of work, especially if you're one artist or a small artist team. So when I'm working on my pages, I go through my penciling stages super, super quickly. I want to save all of my effort and finesse for those inks and those colors because no one, no reader is going to see what my pencils look like. They're just a guide for me to make the final pages look nice. So I'm going to save all my best efforts for the final stages of making my page and therefore just go through pencils as fast as I can. Now I've been told that I'm a very fast artist. I can sketch things really quickly, I can draw things really quickly, um, and the only reason I'm able to do this is because when I was starting my first few webcomics, I really went ham on putting as many pages out as fast as I could, and I didn't care about the quality. I put out so many awful pages <laughs> for my first few comics, and there was no quality assurance, no checking in, no editing. It was all awful, but I did it really, really fast. And just by continuing at that pace really early on in my career, I grew as an artist and my art has become much, much better. Um, but I've been able to keep that speed for the most part in what I do. So now I can be fast and like kind of okay at art now. So that's cool. <laughs> So here are a bunch of things that I learned that have helped me become a faster artist. Hopefully these will help you get through your pencils more quickly because I know you want to get onto those sweet inks or the color stage or whatever. So tip number one, I recommend starting big before drilling into the smaller details. So this means when you are sitting down to draw your comic page, you know, you're doing your pencils, focus on getting the the wider picture down before you start maybe like zooming in and working on things on a really small scale. Start drawing big and then go smaller. So, you know, get all the major forms down that you need to put in, whether it's characters or perspective sketches. Get all the major elements into your composition and make sure that your composition is nice before you start putting in, say, like the characters' expressions or the details on their hair and clothing or little background ornaments. Though honestly, if you've been following along in this challenge and you have been doing good stuff and you did your thumbnails and your design work, a lot of those details, you already understand them, you know where they're going to be already, and you already have a good idea of what this kind of whole picture looks like because you got your thumbnails and that's basically what a thumbnail is. But basically, you want to start big and kind of cover off all the major stuff first because if you go in and you start with one panel and you focus in on all the little details first and you put your character in and you do all the rendering on their hair or their face or whatever and then you look up after like three hours of working on this one panel to make it super beautiful, you look up and the composition just doesn't work. <laughs> and that is the worst feeling ever. Because now it's like, well, the composition doesn't work for the rest of the page. I have to redo this panel. <laughs> and now you gotta erase all those lovely details that you put in that you spent three hours on and you're back to square one and it sucks. So make sure that you were, you know, I guess gesturing in or filling in in a really kind of vague way where everything is placed, all the major elements, what's going where before you start drilling down and really putting detail into things. It'll make things go way faster, it'll stop you from backtracking, it's the best. Tip number two for your pencils and your lovely sketches and underdrawings, make sure that you are starting with gesture as well. So when you're putting down, say, your characters, focus on the motion, focus on the momentum. Working with gesture is also just a technique that I feel adds to working quickly. I mean, if you've ever gone to, like, a figure drawing class, you'll usually do sketches where you just focus on getting, like, the gesture and the action line down in, like one minute or two minutes or 30 seconds and as it gets faster you kind of learn how to do it faster. Um, so I'd recommend doing this kind of idea with your comic art. You know, 
it'll be really awkward at first, but the more you practice just getting down your gesture and getting kind of the bones into everything, like the bones of your character and like the motion and stuff, you'll get faster at it and you'll get better at it and you'll inject so much like movement and life into your characters this way um, and you'll just get faster at it. And it'll probably stop you from drawing a character in a pose that is like super stiff you don't like it the more you look at it and then you have to redraw it and try to figure out how to make it less stiff. And again, you're just stopping yourself from having to redo things over and over again. And using gesture also will make your inks and uh, colors or shapes or whatever you're using to finish off your page. It'll make it so much more full of life and loveliness. And again, don't worry about those details. Those will come later when you're doing the finishing touches on everything. Tip number three. I think this one is one of the most important things that I learned. I think it's really important for, like, artists who are starting out. We actually talked about this on a recent critique that we had on Saturday. On the last of every month, we do a critique of, like, our Patreon supporters and their art. And I was talking about on this one uh, critique, which is what made me think of this, is to, when you're drawing, say you're lining something or doing your pencils, make sure that if you're creating a line, you're not doing lots of tiny lines to create one line. So like I, I had a teacher who used to call this like chicken scratch where it's like it's like a bunch of little tiny lines and that's how you like slowly create a line. And this is bad. Like the reason you shouldn't do it is because one it's really bad for your wrist. It's it usually means doing a lot of little tiny repetitive mo movements in your wrist and that's going to cause lots of pain down the road. And it also makes your lines really stiff. It's giving like the reader lots of like lots of lines to kind of like pull their eye toward and it just makes them read a line slower um and it it, it kind of gives you less control of where you put the line as well because you're so focused on all these little movements instead of like focusing on one big swoop of a line so what you should do instead instead of having multiple tiny lines making up one just use one line um, and again this is something that takes a lot of practice initially and it'll probably feel awkward and you'll have to do control z a whole bunch if you're doing digital art um, or a lot of erasing if you're doing traditional stuff but it's really important that you use your whole arm and you just do one single line instead of doing lots of little tiny ones. Um, it makes it easier to read. It adds, like, fluidity to your lines. It makes them feel like they're moving. And it's a lot faster. I mean, once you get over that initial awkward stage, it's so much faster to just put down, like, one line and then you're done. You don't have to sit there forever slowly crafting this line. It's just like swoosh, it's done. So make sure you're practicing that and use one line instead of many. Tip number four, the way I work, I think I mentioned this on a previous video, uh, this challenge, but the way I work is that I would like to work in batches. So instead of taking a comic page and I start by thumbnailing it and then penciling it and then inking it and coloring it and I do that all kind of like in order on one page and then once that's done, moving on to the next page, doing thumbnail and then pencil and then inks, etc. What I usually do is I'll grab like five pages and I'll do all the thumbnails for them. Then I'll do all the pencils and then I'll do all the inks. Um, instead of having to stop and start kind of new thought processes. So instead of like going from your thumbnails to your pencils or even jumping between inking a page and then going back to penciling one of your pages, try doing things in batches. It'll get you in the zone when you're sitting down to pencil because um, you'll only have to think in that brain where you are penciling. For me, this really helps me kind of get in the zone and kind of do what I'm doing to the best of my ability instead of having to like reset my brain to focus on like what I need to focus with inking, which like takes a lot more detail and it's a lot slower and um, I have to really be kind of like thinking about the details and the whole. Whereas like when I'm penciling, it's very gestural and it's very quick and it's very... Um, loose and sketchy. So instead of wasting energy switching between tasks, I can just focus on one little patch at a time and I find it goes way quicker because I don't have to reset myself at all. So yeah, working in batches is great. I highly recommend it. And tip number five, this is another, I think, kind of weird thing that I do. Um, jump between panels when you get stuck. 
So if you are penciling a whole bunch of pages, you've got your batch, and you're drawing one panel, and you're like, oh, nothing is working, what do I do? Jump to the next panel. Just leave this one half finished, move on to another one. Move on to a whole new page if you need to. You know, you've got your thumbnails, you kind of have an idea of how things are going to look, you can just jump around. It's fine. Um, so I do this all the time, where I'll usually... When I sit down to draw, I'll kind of be, like, in the mood to draw a certain thing. So, some days I'm like, I want to sit down and draw backgrounds, or I want to draw facial expressions. So, I'll go through my batch of pages, and I'll just focus on, like, jumping around, drawing someone's expression. I'll go to the next panel, draw their expression, etc. Um, until, eventually, I've kind of patchworked my way through all my pages and all the panels are done. Um, and this just stops you from, like, overworking a panel and being stuck on it forever and never moving on to other stuff that needs attention. Because I find when I, like, I have a problem in a panel and I'm just, like, staring at it forever, it can be really hard to solve and really hard to, like, think creatively or, you know, it can be hard to know how to fix the problem you're in. Maybe you don't know why things feel weird or they don't look good. Um, so taking a break and focusing on something else but, like, still getting your comic page done... I find it really helps kind of get things unstuck. And once I've taken a break, I can go back and look at that panel and be like, oh, it was too stiff, I didn't do my gesture or whatever. Or like, oh, this was, the composition was weird, I didn't follow my thumbnail or something like that. So yeah, jump around to different things and follow your interests because if you're really excited to draw your characters into like five pages, that's a really good thing to do because you're going to be more motivated to work on it and you're going to be faster at it because you're having fun instead of like forcing yourself to do all the not fun bits until later. And yeah, sometimes like I'm at the end of my page and I'm like, Ugh, I didn't draw like half the backgrounds because I didn't want to draw backgrounds today, but they have to be done. So sometimes you really do just kind of have to sit there and be frustrated, especially right at the end once you've jumped around and done all your favorite bits. But for the most part, your pages are almost done, so you're good. Heck yeah. And now you're a super fast artist who can zoom through their pencils and get onto your inks and stuff where you can really put all your effort and your time and your little detail brain. So heck yeah. You're good. You're Gucci. <sighs> okay. I hope this has helped. I'm dying of heat. I want to go to our little air conditioned room. <sighs> While I was writing my script for this video, my laptop was overheating and I was sweating to to dehydration levels and <laughs> it was bad. So I was like, please. Ah, but it's so hot. It's supposed to be like 40 degrees Celsius tomorrow and I'm slowly melting into a puddle. So, oh, okay. Thank you. I hope this was coherent even in my heat days and I'm gonna go eat a popsicle and do my art. So thank you so much for watching. Um, make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. We have lots of lovely art and writing videos all about comics so if you need more help with that we got so many videos to help help you out my friend. And make sure to check out the Nine Point Kickstarter which is the comic I'm working on here in these videos. We're hoping to get enough funding to print issue number two, so please go check it out if you would like to support us. It would mean a lot to us. Link down below, probably. Um, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!